take a look at the uh, properties of exponents. This should mostly be a reminder of things. You won't find a lot of emphasis on this in the book right now, but I think it's something uh, worthy of reminding. Uh, remembering what exponents are all about and kind of our key picture in uh, remembering what exponents uh, represent is that it's our shortcut notation for repeatedly multiplying things together. We're going to expand that concept as we go through this chapter, certainly, but uh, that's kind of the thing to keep us going here. So there are some properties here. These are not magical things. These are just results of the notation that they chose to use and the, the way that uh, notation interacts with itself in certain situations. So um, the first property is what we call the multiplication property. The bases we see are the same. The exponents are different and um, what this results in is an addition of the exponents. To understand that this could go both ways, we might have uh, something on one side that we're trying to, to get to the other direction. Some examples here, if we had 5 squared times 5 to the 4th, this is a simple reminder, 5 squared means 5 times 5, and 5 to the 4th means 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, and these are being multiplied together here in the middle, so well, that's just six fives being multiplied uh, together. And our shortcut for that is to say multiply five by itself six times. That's what the notation means. And so the fact that you add these together just kind of becomes a, a result of what is going on. Okay. Um, we can also look at something like, uh, let me grab a different color for a second example. If we had something that looked like 2 to the x times 2 to the 3x plus 2 power, the bases again are the same. The rule now says add these together. Um, and so this is where we now trust the rule because we don't just have specific numbers to tell us how many times we're multiplying the 2 together. But we have the x plus the 3x plus 2. And this simplifies to a 2 to the 4x plus 2 power. And that's what that multiplication property looks like. We're going to take a look at the division property because every time there's a multiplication, there's a, there's a division. The multiplication ended up um, becoming addition in the exponents. And uh, this is going to end up being subtraction in our exponents. Okay. Let me scroll down a little, give myself some more space. So um, as examples here, I could do something like uh, if I did 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 3rd, well, 2 to the 5th means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2, and well, we know that 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 2 divided by 2 is 1, and all we're left with is uh, two 2's left in the numerator, there's always a 1 left in the denominator, and we get to that 2 because it's the 5 minus the 3, right? That kind of makes sense as we go through there. And then we also need to be able to trust that in the notation. So if I had something that looked like uh, 5 to the 3x plus 2 divided by 5 to the 2x minus 5, okay? Well, the bases are the same. Uh, which is important, but it's going to tell us we're going to do that 3x plus 2, and from that we're going to subtract a 2x minus 5. I have to distribute the subtraction through there, but I got a 3x minus a 2x, which is a 1x, and a 2 minus negative 5, which is a positive 7. And so I can see that that should simplify to a 5 to the x plus 7. I don't know what x is, but I know that's a simpler thing to look at than what I had at the beginning. Okay. Third property is our power to a power rule. Okay. The power to a power rule, if we took a look, let's look at the example here first. If I looked at something like 7 squared cubed, so I've got a base to a power to another power, well, that means... 7 times 7 cubed. 
And so this is the 7 times 7, that's two 7s multiplied together, and this says I've, I'm going to do that three times. So 7 times 7 once, 7 times 7 again, 7 times 7 a third time, and so now I can see that there are six of those, so this becomes a 7 to the 6 power. There's two groups of three, well that's going to be six sevens, and I get that, so that's uh, my shortcut for... Uh, repeated uh, multiplication here is that exponent. So two groups of three, this is b to the m times n. I've got those m groups of b, and I had to do that n times. So this should make a lot of sense there as well. Okay. And I could, uh, I could do this with variables up there as well. I could talk about uh, 3 to the 2x plus 1 to the x minus 5 power and the property would say well that's 3 to the 2x plus 1 times x minus 5 and if I multiply those things together in the exponents I'm going to get what a 2x squared uh, minus 9x minus 5. Okay, minus 10x plus 1x, yep. Yeah. Okay, so um, following that same pattern again, it's just the multiplication there. I can see it easily when it's all numbers, um, and that confidence that I get from working with the numbers lets me generalize that to uh, variables. Okay. okay, property four, the zero power property says that anything to uh, the zero power, so can kind of state what we generally see this as, is anything to the zero power is 1. And so b to the zero is equal to 1. There's a slight exception in this uh, when b is happens to be zero, all sorts of goofy things might happen here, but not things that we're going to deal with in Algebra 2. Okay. But we can see this by example. So here if I did 6 cubed over 6 cubed, on one hand this is a number divided by itself, so it's clearly 1, but if I apply my division rule, it's 6 to the 3 minus 3 power, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So I can view this as either 6, six to the 0 or a number divided by itself is equal to 1. So these two things must be the same, and it doesn't really matter what that number is that I use in there. Okay. And then finally, our uh, negative power property. Okay. So the negative power here, let's kind of work through this as well. So if we look at, uh, I'll stick a number in there again. So let's go with, uh, I don't think I've used 8 yet. 8 to the negative 3. Okay. Well, 8 to the th negative 3 could have, I could get negative 3 by doing 0 minus 3. Um, but the subtraction up there means that it looks like it might have been a division problem, which could have looked like, 8 to the 0 over 8 to the 3, I would have simplified that this way. Okay. But anything to the 0 power is 1, so that's like 1 over 8 to the 3rd. So 8 to the negative 3 is 1 over 8 to the 3rd. Our generalization of this property is that this is going to be the same thing as 1 over b to the positive m. Okay. And if we did um, an example, if we had something like uh, 1 over uh, 3 to the uh, x plus 2, then we could rewrite this. This is kind of going in the uh, other direction here. We've got 1 over b to the m. That's the same thing as 3 to the negative x plus 2, or 3 to the negative x minus 2, um, and that's an example of applying that uh, negative power property. Okay. 
those are the properties of the exponents that we need to be familiar with. And uh, we'll be using those, like I said, in both directions, and this should have felt like a review.